Okay, from a historical perspective, wind energy has been a very important factor here in the Netherlands, also in other parts of the world. For example, humanity has used wind to power ships across the oceans, and also windmills were, of course, very important um, and very important industry in the Netherlands, especially, but also outside. Nowadays, of course, we use wind for energy production. is really a is a cornerstone of energy transition. We basically want for 2020 we want to go to 20% CO2 reduction. It's the goal. 14% should come from renewable energies. So how do we achieve that? Basically what we do is we build bigger wind turbines. Everything gets bigger, more powerful. We try to reach the wind in higher altitudes. That's the mission behind, um, behind wind energy. So, um, but what you can also see is that um, there is a limit. At some point, wind turbines are too big too costly, um, we go offshore, we need large installation, so we quickly, we right now run into limits. So we have to think about new technologies, and that's what I want to speak about here. So we have a concept that is actually following this trend to go from small to large, that's where we are currently, 200 meter hub height, by using kites. Kites have been around humanity for thousands of years, and we use them now for sport activities. They actually have a very interesting history because uh, in 1900, around 1900, kites were used for meteorological purposes, for aerial photography, as test devices for aircraft, for example. So all this declined with the advent of aircraft, but now they are back as sports devices. Um, also for ships, we use them to pull ships and we think that we can go faster than with conventional sails because kites do not have a bending moment on the mast. There are companies who build very large kites, like for example this one in Hamburg, Sky Sails, 300, meter, uh, 300 square meter kites to propel ships, large container vessels, achieving fuel consumptions of up to 40%. Um, other people try to build wind turbines that float in the air or really go much higher with constructions. This is a wind turbine concept from 1930. And the question is, can we even go to the jet stream? There is a very high energy density there, uh, wind speeds of 100 kilometers per hour and more in these uh, layers of the atmosphere. So that's the question. Interesting is that right now there are 45 companies and university institutions worldwide active in this hunt to extract the energy from the atmosphere. And here are a couple of these names. And the interesting point is that this has um, come up in the last 10 years. So this drive to find new energy sources actually is something very recent. So here we have three in 2000 and uh, about 45 in uh, 212. And here are a couple of concepts that are actually around. And these can be uh, balloons uh, which rotate in the air and drive a generator or kites that pull. Uh, they, these can be wings with little propeller turbines on them. And this is the basic motivation why we actually go high. I already explained. Wind gets high. Uh, wind gets a very high density, uh, energy density, if you go higher. So that's why we want to go from turbines at 200 meter altitude to about a kilometer to really harvest the energy density there. So the important or the interesting aspect is how do we do this with kites and what is the basic motivation behind that? And to explain that, we look at a wind turbine and we realize only the, the last 25% of the turbine blade creates more than 50% of the energy that is converted. On the other hand, this uh, generator sits high up in the air where you can service it only very 
uh, cumbersomely and um, basically it has a large bending moment on that mass. So ideally, we separate the two, we put the generator on the ground where it should be, and we put the wing high up into the air where it can extract the maximum energy. And we connect both with a cable uh, structure that is optimized for, um, for carrying this traction load. By that we remove the mast and uh, a lot of the structure. And this is the basic principle. We want to reduce the structural costs of the system. Um, in this sense, we can reduce the energy costs in the end. That's the mission behind that. And how does it work? Basically, we see that at some point, this reeling out kite, which actually drives the generator here on the ground, will reach a maximum altitude. Then we have to switch back and reel in. So we actually fly this pumping cycle, reel out phase, with crosswind figure eight maneuvers, like you know, from the surface at the beach. Then we depower the kite, we flag it into the wind, we pull it back. This maneuver is explained here in this animation. You see basically how the, the kite is controlled by a control unit that hangs below the kite. That one is attached to a strong plastic cable and it drives a, a winch, a basically a, a drum which is connected to a generator and we actually create energy by reeling out. At some point, we reach the maximum altitude, and the kite's rotated into the wind and pulled back. For that, we need a little bit of energy, but in a net over the whole cycle, we actually um, generated energy. This is our prototype system that we have. It's a 25 square meter kite, and this is the control unit. And um, it also illustrates nicely what the, what the basic idea behind that concept is. It's actually system intelligence to control versus a lot of material to constrain. This is the, that is the big leap in technology that we do. The turbine basically requires a lot of steel to make it go around. Uh, we fly the system with a little control unit, which in the end, like your mobile, will have a lot of integrated embedded electronics and will make the whole thing fly on a certain trajectory. That's the trick, and the idea is to reduce the cost. So here you see a uh, ground station, the ground station of the system in front of wind turbines. And this is a picture from the air, which nicely shows the, um, the airborne powertrain basically from the kite to the control unit into the ground station where the energy is produced. So here you see another picture from a helicopter. And uh, this one nicely shows that in the end we want to get rid of the energy generation plants which actually pollute our atmosphere. We want to replace them by these devices which actually can harvest energy. This is at the mass lock, the two. That one I skip. Very nice, of course. Kites do not pollute the horizon. So we have a cable going into the sky. At the end is this kite. You will have few people complain about this because you don't see the system. It nicely integrates into the landscape. It is very lightweight. It's actually in a floating structure in the sky. So this is a, a good feature. It's flexible and soft, which is, a, which is an important aspect for safety. So these kind of devices will be safe. And birds have no problem with them because kites fly slow. And even if they bump into a kite, they will recover and fly off. So that's the key idea. And here I have some interesting movies which show how the whole thing works. This is the kite during the traction phase where it produces energy, it flies figure eights, and the cable reels out. And at some point, that is just one figure of eight maneuver, at one point, we reach the maximum cable extension 
Then the winch, the drum switches to reeling. You hear it accelerating now. And we pull back the cone. That phase costs some energy. And once we are back, basically, the whole cycle starts all over. And in this way, we pump energy from the sky to the ground. That's another nice movie about the wing flying in the sky. You see nicely here the bridling system to suspend the kite with the control unit. This is the landscape of Friesland. So here we fly in the evening sun. And the howling noise that you hear is actually from the flight speed generator. Okay, so um, these are some technological aspects. Here is our system with all the different components. We're far more than 12 minutes now, I see. Um, so these are some key aspects of our technology demonstrator. And the vision, of course, is eventually to go into a kite park where we replace the wind turbines by kite systems which are more cost effective, uh, produce energy at a lower price. Eventually we want to achieve a price of 2 to 4 euro cents per kilowatt hour. So that's the mission. Next to that, kites are also an interesting research topic. And that's why we ha have, um, that's why we actually have the subject here at the university. Um, basically, we use it for flow computation, for structural simulation. It's very complex. You have to look at the flow inside the kite, around the kite, the structural deformation of the kite. This is an image of the flow. Um, another uh, flow simulation. We also do wind tunnel measurements of kites. This here is in Stuttgart in the Böen Wind Canal. So we use, um, we use smoke trail analysis to examine the flow patterns over the kite and by that optimizing the shape of the wing. And we also have conferences. Uh, this one was in Stanford, the first conference on airborne wind energy. This one was in Leuven last year. Uh, already more than a hundred researchers around the world gathered at that spot to discuss the subject. And we do joint testing with other kite researchers. So here you see our system with a system that comes from Berlin. Um, that shouldn't be there. Thank you for your attention. Okay, that was by far.